about sex. We're up for it whenever you are. Wink, wink. Why millennials are keeping their relationships and their bedroom doors wide open. Then Oscar winner Susan Sarandon's dropping a blonde bombshell on one of the biggest superstars in Hollywood history. I don't know how I had such a selfish child. And he's taken hits on the show before. <laughs> but today, The View's warm-up comedian Tom Kelly takes center stage to show you the funny. Plus, if you thought Johnny Depp was nuts as the Mad Hatter, find out how Whoopi's taking Wonderland to a whole new level today. Everyone here is mad. I'm mad. You're mad. This is The View with Whoopi, Nicole Wallace, Rosie Perez. And today, Raven Simone and Michelle Collins hit the co-host chairs. It all starts now. and we decided we were going to get deep today. <laughs> very deep, very deep. Because we're not afraid to tackle the tough stuff <laughs> in Hot Topics. <laughs> <laughs> so let me put this to you. Are you washing your bra too much? <laughs> <laughs> because apparently overwashing your bra <laughs> can cause that bra to lose support, <laughs> which can damage your breasts, make them grow in funny directions. <laughs> Sometimes they're looking you in the face. Oh. And experts recommend that you wash it after three or four years. Oh, years? <laughs> my bad, my bad. Three or four wears. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Do you agree? <laughs> this whole thing about bras and boobs, I mean, you're supposed to have new bras with lots of lift. I didn't know that. This whole washing thing is a mystery to me. I don't know. I, I throw them in like when they end up in the pile of laundry yeah. in the bathroom. I don't know how to well, what about I would, you, Kitty? I would buy more bras if they weren't so expensive for my cup size. Yeah. Same, same here. Same here. Yeah. 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 Like, really? Maybe yeah. They, they're yeah. so, very, very a bra very for me can cost like four fifty if it's a good what? bra. What? Four dollars? Are you going to Toyota for a bra? Where no, are you leasing your bra? You lift it a little too much. Pull a little something oh. some back. <laughs> Thank you. Um, no, but here's the deal. Like, I don't wash my bras that much. If right. anything, my grandmother used to hand wash hers. Yeah. Yes. And then if it's, and if it's a really bad one, you know that wire can come out right yes, there. I hate that. I hate that. Poking you all day. Like, yeah. I'm not uh, buying another $400 bra. I never throw those bras, bras away. No. Like, when, like, when underwear's, ha when, when your underwear has a hole in it, I have that, no, you know, like, you don't want to get caught with a hole in your underwear. But bras, my, I have a drawer full of holy bras, wire stick, oh, and I push the wire back yeah. in and say, oh, it'll be fine. Yeah, yeah but it sneaks it's... out and pokes you. It's I like, know. it fakes you out, like poking, know. you know. They said it's because it's it too small, but I think it's because they want to see $400 <laughs> for a bra? Yes, and Does you know, it drive? <laughs> no. Seriously. My headlights make yeah, sure yeah. they do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I haven't worn a bra since before most of you were born. <laughs> you know, I just kick stuff out the way. <laughs> Put it back here. Sometimes I use it as a neck warm. <laughs> okay, but I have a question. Do you yes. sleep in your bras? No. no. I don't yes. wear a bra. You do? Yeah. Like, I don't, you don't sleep, you sleep in yours? No. Wire or no wire? No wire. Oh. Okay. Y'all sleep in your bras? No. no. It's like, uncomfortable. See, I heard two things. I heard if well, you sleep in your bras, it helps them get yes. higher. That's why my, my breasts are still saying hello. Mm. <laughs> you know? Mine wish me good night. <laughs> Wait, well. back up. So, because uh, I want to do what you're doing. Um, if you sleep in it, it keeps them up. Uh, well, gravity, when you lay down, gravity takes its toll. Everything yes. goes, why do you think they go and say hello to your armpits right when you go there. to sleep? 
you know? So it just keeps them all in place. Just do this. It brings your muscles together. You'll be good. Right behind your head. Pick them right behind your head and lay on them like that. Well, let me ask you this, because it's, this goes to the same thing. So, like, when you guys buy new clothes, do you wash them before you wear them? Depends on what it is. <gasps> I, can I be you disgusting? Have, ooh, I never do. Oh, honey. Ever. Can we be real? I never I wash never them. Do even underwear. And you know what? what? And I'll tell What's you why. Right. No, no, no. <laughs> you, you, you have to. You, please, please, please. The, because most people don't look and see where their clothes are made, right. sometimes there are chemicals in them that we do not allow. You've got to wash the stuff before you put it on. You yeah. just have to. And you would to. never put, I, I mean, I have a toddler, you know, the first thing you do when, you, or when you're pregnant and you wait, you wash all those clothes three yeah, times for right. this reason. So you had to do it for yourself. Okay. Yeah, but also it's a theater trick. Of what you could do is you could, my dresser, uh, Jamie, uh, uh, you spray with vodka. Just buy cheap oh, vodka. Yeah. Oh, right in here. Vodka. And the vinegar. Right in this guy. <laughs> hey, you know what? A dating site for people looking for open relationships found that 40% of their users are between the ages of 18 and 35. Mm. Now that I found kind of shocking. I mean, I understand why people my age do it, but I'm shocked that, that folks this young are doing that. Looking are you surprised? For open relationships? Yeah, at, at this young age. We you saw know, so many failed ones before. We try to make sure we don't go through that again. Mm -hmm. Well, failed relationships have been happening since the beginning of time. Yeah, but, yeah. but the you internet know, hasn't been. And you know, ever <laughs> since the, the internet key. became a thing, it's that's so easy key. to hook up with people, meet new people. I think the options now are so much greater than they used to be that you can't limit yourself to just one. It's like um, oh, Pringles, you know? So, like, somebody, is that, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. I was say, no, no. is it an option on, like, an online dating thing? Like, I'm looking for a steady relationship. I'm looking for an open I mean, do you Let have me to answer this? Question? Tinder, I've matched with guys who will, after, let's call it 15 minutes of chatting, what a sad life I lead. Anyways, they'll say to me, oh, by the way, I'm married, or they'll say, I have a girlfriend, but this and that, and I'm like, why? At least they put it out there. You know what I mean? That's actually a good so thing. They're looking so they're you, so you can make the choice. Exactly. And I'm not, that's not yeah, for me. Yeah, that's but, not your thing. Well, there's no. a difference between a relationship and sex, though. Like, it, there a is difference. a big difference. Yeah. Sometimes all you want is sex. Okay, I'm sorry. I know this is... No, 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 no. And let me just reiterate by saying, as I always do, keep your emails and your tweets and stuff to yourself, because I, I don't, don't care. care. <laughs> but, you know, I used to get in big trouble on this show all the time, because I said, you know, some, I don't want a relationship. Sometimes I do want sex, and I don't mind a hit and run. Mm. I, <laughs> but that's because I don't want it. I don't want to have your kids. I don't want to meet your family. I just want to get laid. <laughs> People find, people think, you know, I know more women who are like that because they're like, look, when I'm looking for him, the sex is what comes secondary because if he's a bonehead, I don't know if I want him. So I just want to get, I just want to take care of that itch and move on. You know? <laughs> There's a video that went viral a little while ago about a baby learning to crawl and he's getting some help from his best friend. Check this out. Come on, look, this is how you do it. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Come on, come on, we got stuff to do. Come on, baby. That's it, one, two. What? What are you doing? No, uh, okay, wait. One, two, that's it, that's it. Come on, come on, girl, we're running. We'll be right back. to give your digits to Magic Mike? Why it could bring out the beast in you next. Hey, now. <laughs> Welcome back. There is a new high-tech mattress that... <laughs> that lets a couple know that they haven't had sex in a while. <laughs> Apparently, this mattress will even send push notifications <laughs> suggesting a romantic date. So what I want to know is, what the hell else is this mattress like? If, it, no, if it's smart enough to send me a text, I want to know what else it's doing. 
Yeah. I want to know, is it based on... Movement? Yeah, like, rough movement or real movement? I think it's a mattress. Like, what else could it be based on? But I'm, I'm just saying there's different types of sex people be having. It's based on you the know what I'm points. saying? <laughs> That's, That's all. <laughs> you know, may, I'm saying. Maybe they'll mistake someone rolling over for an older couple getting it on. They last for two <laughs> seconds. Yeah, yeah. That's a two-second rollover. You know, really let me tell you about older <laughs> couples. They know, they know what to do. Of course they Those know. Those old men, they get, they, you know you got six minutes. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And it's just like this. <laughs> and she's just they like... Just... <laughs> and that's it. It says that the sensors are laced throughout the mattress, measuring activity through general pressure points, and then it can and it push notifies to your iPhone watch or a watch. So your nightmare. phone beeps. That's it. Or, <laughs> or what if you get a message and you're not in the bed? That's funny. Ooh, no, this is good. good. What if you get a message Wait. and you're not in the bed? I have two dogs in the bed. I mean, I feel like they can do some of those. You know, they, you wash your sheets. Like... Yeah. <laughs> But, yeah. See, I don't want all this automated. I don't want smart stuff in the house. Do you need a reminder, by the way? Like, I'm reminded every morning that I'm not having enough sex. Like, I need it to, like, beep on my droid. No, thank you. Well, maybe this will <laughs> lead to this, because, you know, hell has no fury like a woman scorned, according to new research that found that if a woman is rejected by a man she's attracted to, she's going to take it out on a, a man she finds less attractive? Mm -hmm. Why would you want to go with this chick anyway? I mean, <laughs> that's terrible. See, I'm lucky because I like ugly guys. So, like, it's going to be a very rare, that's my type. Seriously, like, like, ugly. But you know what I mean, like, sexy, ugly guys because I know what I can bring in. So I'm not going after, like, uh, name someone hot. <laughs> like, no, uh, I, I don't Thor. accept that. I, I yeah, think you're we are accept no, but that's not to go for the hot, I mean, I do, but then I've just learned from being alive. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that, like, sometimes that's not going to happen. And if, you know what I mean? Like, I just tend to be attracted to guys who are in my, yeah, I'm just saying. I'm, don't, I'm not putting myself down. to manipulate I, I, a little bit yes. more that aren't going to put their looks above yours. My mother said never date a peacock or marry one. Never marry a guy who's too hot, takes too good a care of himself, because in the end, he's going to treat you badly. No, no, in the end, he's probably gay. <laughs> Also gay. <laughs> so, you know, there's a new study out of Harvard which will make a lot of working moms feel much better. Are, are there working moms in the audience? Woo! All of you stand up. Stand up, working moms. Stand up. I want... Yeah. So here's... Here is a gift. Here's a gift for you guys. They found that kids benefit from having mothers who work and they even wind up being more successful, your children will. And especially it works out for young women who see their moms working. Now, does this surprise anybody at the table? No, it didn't. It, well, you know, as you know, I wasn't raised by my birth mother. Mm -hmm. uh, she did not work. Um, but my aunt, who is my soul and heart's mom, mm -hmm. she did work. She worked three uh, different jobs a day right. in Bushwick. Right. And watching her come home every single day just spent, pushed. you know, mm -hmm. pushed. It just, you know, at first it used to break my heart, but it also propelled me to work that much harder so that she wouldn't have to suffer anymore and I wouldn't have to live a life of suffering either. Mm -hmm. And it made me a very, very uh, tenacious and responsible young woman. Yeah. So for me, that holds true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to stand up, though. Sorry to interrupt you. I just... I agree. I think it's wonderful when moms work, and, I, and I'd love to see that, especially in my family when you see the women work. But it's also a different kind of job when you're a stay-at-home mom. For That's sure. a hard job as well, taking care of a whole household. Yes. That's yeah. a different kind of job that I don't think different. gets as much appreciation in this type of study and in other ways. Like, we need, mothers need to get paid for being at home, taking care of the next generation. Yeah, yeah. So I, think, I think the culture holds up the stay-at-home mother as more noble than the working mom. The working moms are the ones that feel like crap. The stay-at-home mothers are sort of held up as the ones that have their priorities in line. And so I think it's all heroic. I think just being a woman is, the, is you, you know, we're the, whether you have kids or no kids, you're the ones juggling. And, mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, so I think just being a woman is heroic. Now, you know how we love viral videos on oh, this yeah. show. So we're going to show you another one. And this one... <laughs> this 
went viral because the cat really found something to sing about. Take a look. <laughs> Winner Susan Sarandon blows the lid off the secret life of one of Hollywood's most iconic stars. Next. Oscar winner Susan Sarandon stars in the new miniseries The Secret Life of Marilyn Monroe. She plays Marilyn's mentally ill mother who did not mince words with her daughter. Take a look. Xanak put me on a film. It's called The Seven Year Itch. Billy Wilder's directing. I'm starring. And Joe just doesn't understand why it's so important to me. Does he love you? Yes. Do you love him? Yes. Have a baby. Look, I just don't want to mess everything up. Please, Mother, what do you think I should do? I think that you should stop coming to see me because you never ask me how I'm doing. You never do anything for me. All you do is talk about yourself. I don't know how I had such a selfish child. Mm. Please welcome Susan Sarandon. Um, she's actually pretty old now. She's been coming on this show for like <laughs> forever. <laughs> um, she's she's uh, gonna be 14 in Look the fall. Penny. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Penny, so this is Penny. Yes, and Penny, uh, she manages to get in just about every movie. She likes working. <laughs> Sag after us. She's shaking not because she's scared. I think it's just cold. We've been backstage. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. don't she's I'm you not being abusive. This, this really you warm, warm wonderful thing. Here, yeah, I give it to you. It's you really cuddle? great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look, she she looks like a sweater. Oh my god. That's like Like Lane is a Rob. Let's get to um, the reason why you're here. Why um, am I here? You you're here because we ask everything I need to know day. before I even came out. Yeah. Bras, beds, men, everything. Yeah. I, I'm set now, that's yeah. why. Yeah, but um, uh, you know, this, this, this role is just outstanding as you are. And Thanks. it's the first time many people will find out that Marilyn Monroe actually did have a mom that was living and that she was mentally ill and was institutionalized the entire life of Marilyn yeah. and uh, actually then outlived her, which was crazy yeah. for mm -hmm. quite a few years. But um, that's how she ended up in an institution. I mean, that's how Marilyn ended up in uh, foster care yeah. for so long and everything that happened to her. And I think that the inference is that she starts to hear voices too, possibly, because she was on heavy. I mean, I, when I started doing research, I don't know how she lasted as long as she yeah. did, because she got a lot of different drugs from a lot of different doctors. Plus, she drank constantly. All the time. Looked gorgeous. I don't know how she managed that, but she <laughs> kept working somehow. And uh, and then, the, but the secret of this mom and the need for her love and everything else was very, very difficult uh, for her. What are some of the other surprises that we'll find out if we watch this movie? It was a wonderful movie, by the way. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think that's the big one, you know, the ups and downs of that and, and, and where was her father and the different men. They go into a lot of the different men that were very different, each one of them, and kind of somewhat abusive in their own way. And your daughter, Eva, appears in the movie as a younger you, right? Yes, we switch on and off. I played her older in the Adam Sandler movie, which she had the main part. Now, she came in <laughs> just quickly uh, to play me younger, and, but also still having uh, episodes. She was very, uh, but she just, she had a small baby, my daughter, and, uh, and uh, so it was kind of a nice way. Here she is. 
Do you I, love, so you're, I can't even say this because you're so hot. You're a grandma. Yeah, I don't mind being a grandma. It? It's so much easier catching than pushing. It's much easier. <laughs> <laughs> and, she, and she had a homebird. A homebird. She, um, she's a wild little girl, too. She's really fun. She's just so funny and so strong and really all over the place. She and she uh, She's going to give my daughter a run for her money. I can't wait to see that. <laughs> and you were, there, you were there for the home birth, right? Eva uh, had a 36-hour home birth, wow. and I was there. And I did get to see the baby struggling to be born. And it was the first time I really understood death, I think, to see mm -hmm. this thing changing its environment and trying to figure out how to cope. It was like a magnificent National Geographic special yes. where we put the baby on her stomach, still connected, and right. she crawled to yes. the breast. Yes. Did you know Girl, a baby no, could do that? girls are what? so smart. Yeah. Like, I, 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 <laughs> yes, like a kangaroo. Yeah. Yeah. She just, yeah. I mean, I, none of my kids, I had two natural births, and the third one, I was like, why am I not doing drugs again? I can't <laughs> even remember. So I had a s epidural. But, but the first two, and, uh, you know, it's so extraordinary, and we had a great mm. team of women that were yeah. there, and, you know, That's it was awesome. great. Yeah, thank you. God. My mother was very high when she had me. I was a huge baby. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> now you're single now, I'm not Susan. Surprised. I mean, really, this was like a big, a big situation, a lot of drugs whipping. Okay. <laughs> You are single now, which I think a lot of yeah. people are excited to yeah. hear. Um, Thank you. I hope so. Well, I think so, yeah. We've been talking about a lot of um, celebrities using dating sites. <laughs> so I guess the question we have is, Susan Sarandon, are you on Tinder? <laughs> are you using dating sites? No, I am not swiping either way, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, I, would, I could use um, this opportunity, although I don't know any man that I might find would be home right now watching this show, but I could use this to start a PSA about what I'm looking for. Okay, I know. Wait, wait. Yeah. yeah. No. Go ahead. Okay. Here's Susan Sarandon. Okay. All right. Go. All right. All right. I um, I'm not actively looking, but if there's a person, I would leave open the age, the color, the gender, even. I'm open. There you go. Water. Uh, well, it increases your chances, doesn't it? I mean, like, come on. <laughs> Somebody who is not going to find it difficult to be with me, and people come up to me and say, oh, I love your work. That won't turn out to be a right. problem. Someone who's really passionate about what they do, and they love what they do. It's starting to sound like me. A, a little bit like <laughs> Adventurous and yes. can travel like and yes. has Travels. a lot of fun. Yes. Is spiritual, doesn't have to have a re religion like exactly. You know what? I have to tell you, I see you at boxing matches all the time. Men salivate after you. You are not going to have any problem whatsoever. Aww. And, no, that's serious. <laughs> yeah. you, you, no, they, they, they like even more than that. You're a huge supporter of the Women on Twenties campaign. Yes. Please and tell everybody now. about it. Well, we got to, some of us got together and these two ladies started. I'll try to do it really fast. Almost every country has women on its currency and the kids were looking at the bills and saying, why doesn't the United States have a woman? And so these gals got 15 women and then I started sending it out to people that I knew to put on media to vote just to get a petition. There's over 700,000 people now that have voted. And it got narrowed down and narrowed down. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that we actually pick because it's up to the right. Treasury, Secretary right. of Treasury. Exactly. Although the president has said he's open to the idea, to uh, a senator and a representative have introduced a bill. Right. So then it goes to the Treasury, and they form a committee, and then they decide. And um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we have to do it by the book. I know, but come on, guys. How hard is it? It's one bill. It's one bill. Yeah. Could be a 20, could be a 50. What the hell, man? Yeah. Get a bill. Please, please, Susan. Uh, I, I do hope this happens, and I love you. You know, I, I, I do love you, and I can't wait for everyone to watch you thank on this you. special. You are an amazing person, Aww, an amazing thank actress. Yes. Uh, thanks to Susan Sarandon, The Secret Life of Marilyn Monroe premieres May 30th on Lifetime, and we will be right back. The View presents Show Me the Funny.
If you want to find the craziest like uh, neighbor in your neighborhood, find the one with the most Christmas lights. Because I feel like the person with the most Christmas lights outside the house has the most problems inside I the agree. house. I agree. For a guy, a wedding is a big party right before your buddy goes into witness protection. Because after that party, you never see that dude again. <laughs> We've got the best slogan, Kiss Me, I'm Irish, so much better slogan than Turn the Lights Off, I'm Amish, or, or Explain It To Me, I'm Polish, or Circumcise Me, I'm Jewish. So. Every day we have the happiest and the loudest studio audience on television, thanks to our warm-up comedian, Tom Kelly. He's been cracking them up for eight years. Please welcome Tom Kelly. <laughs> Much. Sit down, people. Oh my God. Let me hear all the single ladies. It's been so long since I've had a steady girlfriend that this year for Christmas, mom and dad, they got me match.com, the dating website. Nothing more awkward than when you're sitting there under the Christmas tree and mom and dad just got you match.com and you have to say, Mom, Dad, I already have that. I've been single so long, I just changed my Facebook relationship status from single to non-practicing heterosexual. <laughs> I'm in my 30s and single. I'm at that age now where I've given up on the idea of having my own kids, and I'm now more excited about being a stepdad than a real dad. <laughs> Do we have any step right? Do we have any step parents here? I think being a stepdad is an awesome job. You've got three parents to pay the bills, and if the kid's ugly, not your fault. <laughs> that. That also works if the kid's an idiot, too. You go to parent-teacher conference day, and the teacher's like, Mr. Kelly, your kid has the worst grades in class. And you're like, yeah, takes after his real dad. <laughs> you know? One reason why I want to get married now is I want to have a good bachelor party, because bachelor parties get worse as you get older. I remember my first bachelor party, I was 21. We got drunk. It was awesome, OK? I am 38 now, went to a bachelor party last summer, and we played golf. <laughs> Do you hear me? Golf, people! You know what that means? By the time I get married, my bachelor party's gonna be at Chuck E. Cheese. You know? I'd rather date an older woman than a younger woman. Uh, I think 40 is the perfect age for a woman. Uh, it's just easier to text message with a woman in her 40s, okay? Like, whereas you text message with a woman in her 40s or 50s, and she wants to say, I'm going to the mall, she'll text you, I'm going to the mall, send. Same text message from a girl in her 30s will have like 100 extra letters in it. It'll be like, I'm a ma 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 going ga, 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 to the mall, yay! You know? And then you text someone in their 20s, like little Kardashian over there. You text someone in their 20s, they use the emojis. You know what emojis are? Emojis are like hieroglyphics in your phone, okay? We have worked on the English language for 2,000 years. Steve Jobs has ruined it with six years of the iPhone. <laughs> Same text message from that girl. It's like eyeball car building. And then I'm sitting there playing Pictionary, trying to figure out what the hell she means. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tom Kelly. Good night. To, you know, you, I think you have the hardest job in the world. You have to warm up our crowd and then... No, know, we got the best hosts in the world and we got the best audience in the damn world. Yeah. I'm working here with you guys on your coattails. I have performed for amazing people, the famous people she brings into the audience, ladies and gentlemen. I've had famous people sitting in the front row like we had, uh, you guys know Bruce Springsteen, right? <laughs> well, his mom was here. <laughs> And I got what was almost the nicest compliment of my career. She pulls me to the side after the show, and she says to me, Tom, you remind me of my son when he performs. Now my eyes well up with tears, because I love Bruce Springsteen. Then she says, he sweats a lot, too. <laughs> so what do you mean when you say that you're a social media comedian? I mean, what would you post? 
I, uh, I have a, I'm big on the internet. I uh, love, on my website is thetomkellyshow.com. On YouTube, I'm Tom Kelly Show. On Instagram, I'm Tom Kelly Show. On Match.com, I'm Tom Kelly Show. <laughs> Um, but I do a lot of, like, I just walk around with the iPhone, and it's like a comedy club in your pocket. Like, my most trafficked video is uh, me videotaping myself, sitting right. in the comfort of my own apartment, right. listening to my neighbors have sex. One million <laughs> views. Yeah. And I'm sitting there thinking, if I can hear my neighbors when they're having sex, can they hear me cry when I'm watching The Bachelor? <laughs> Who are your role models? My role models, uh, I, I remember the moment uh, that I wanted to become a comedian was David Letterman. Um, yeah, which he's retired. But I'll tell you one of the biggest treats is uh, I get to work with this one over here who I call the Barbara Streisand of my career. Yes, the guy working you. camera three. Yeah, no, you. <laughs> No, and for all the stuff you see, uh, she's every nerd's dream, ladies and gentlemen. She's one of the funniest comedians in the world, and she's been on Star Trek. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, and she takes care of every single one of us, especially my sweaty ass, so I love you. You're good, kid. You're good. Thank you. Don't Thank forget you. that, ever. Thank You're you. good. Wow, Thank I you, think babe. I'm going to cry. Are I'm you about to cry? I'm about to cry. I'm about to cry. <laughs> Members of our studio audience are going home with a pair of tickets to see Tom Kelly at Dangerfield's oh Comedy God. Club <laughs> in New York City this weekend. Check out our website for details. We'll be right back. Looking Glass Wars trilogy is an action-packed reboot of Alice in Wonderland, and I'm honored that the brilliant author made me a character. So please welcome the fabulous Frank Butter. Okay. Hey, babe. Hey. So be we, before we talk about the books, let's get a little background. So you started as a championship skier, right. and then you went into show business and produced some big Hollywood movies like. What? There's something about Mary. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Thank you. And so then you decided, oh, that's not enough. Let me write a comic? No, I decided to write The Looking Glass Wars because during the production of Something About Mary, we right. had the premiere in London. Right. And I found myself at the British Museum, and they had an exhibit of ancient cards, like playing cards, tarot cards. But there was one deck of Alice-inspired artwork, and I thought, wait a second, what's up with this story? And I found this antiquities dealer, and he told me the real story behind Alice's adventures in Wonderland. What I discovered is that Wonderland is real. Princess Alice Hart was enjoying her seventh birthday when suddenly there was a violent coup led by her evil Aunt Red. Her bodyguard, Hatter Madigan, whisked her to safety through the pool of tears. Now, the legend is it's a portal from Wonderland to our world, but no one's ever come back. Our heroes, they jump into the pool of tears, they get separated. Alice shoots out of a puddle and ends up in Oxford and meets the writer, Lewis Carroll, who wants to write a book about her harrowing adventure, but he betrays her <gasps> and writes that bogus fairy tale. Can you imagine? I'd I've be been mad as hell. I've awesome. been burdened with the truth. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, so now. All of that, my God, then <laughs> so much. Yeah. you expanded the tale with a series of popular graphic novel, which I love, uh, featuring a Hatter H Madigan, and yeah. was that the plan all along, or that's just where you ended there up going? There was no master plan. I was on a book tour, right. and uh, there was a boy who, uh, I was at school, and he asked a question, right. and he said, Mr. Bedour, I'm really upset with you, because in your book, you don't tell the whole story of Hatter's 13 years. Wow. You need to go home and finish and the finish book. It. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but I thought it was a good idea, so I ended up doing a graphic graphic novel series, which right. you're now in, Yay. which is five books that tell the story from Hatter ba Madigan's point of view. Right. So it's, uh, it's uh, the bodyguard's point of view. So I expanded it that way. Can you tell us about her character in the, in the, in the book? Yes. She, uh, <laughs> she is the queen of clubs. Yes. Yes. She, yes. She, She's the best friend with the wickedest character in my book, Queen Red. Of course. Now, now they're best friends, but she's been plotting. She's in love with this, um, with this um, character on the good side, and so she's been plotting against Queen Red. Yeah. And unfortunately, you're noble, but you fail and you lose your head. I know, I know. You do it. But I got fly shoes out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 
So you're releasing your book um, at BookCon right now in New York this weekend, yeah. and it's the prequel title, H Ma Hatter Madigan, Ghost in the Hat Box, and you're revealing your cover art right here on the show. Yes, it's my newest book, and uh, so everybody gets to see what the cover looks like for the first time. Are you guys ready for time. this? Yeah. Can we see the cover, please? Oh, my goodness. Wow. So this is the story of Hatter Madigan as a boy. He's 13, and he enters the Millinery Academy. And in the Academy, they train to become top assassins and bodyguards and uh, spies. And so it's his story from when he entered during his um, four years of the Academy. I want to see the people. I know. I want to see him, too. So you brought some friends here to kind of Bring us into your world. Well, here, here's, yes. This is cosplay. This is cosplay. And, um, you know, a wonderful subculture that I'm absolutely addicted to. Please you, explain. You know, sometimes when you work on a book for a long time, the characters follow you wherever you're going. <laughs> Um, in this case, they're cosplayers who enjoy all characters in pop culture, and they dress up. And um, this is Queen Red, her imperial viciousness. And this is Hatter Madigan, his signature weapon, his hat. I want one. <laughs> and this is the head guardsman, uh, Dodge Anders. And Warrior Alice, the star of my novel. Woo! And this is Whoopi's character, the Queen of Clubs. And by the way, by the way, we made these shoes for Whoopi. These are connected. See, these, this, this all the same fabric. I love oh, yes. Shoes. This is you gotta fun. eat a little more, honey. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta eat a, eat a little bit more. <laughs> Are you guys going on the book tour with him? Are They'll you, all be at, uh, at the book con uh, oh, nice. on, uh, tomorrow and Sunday. So uh, come down. You can get a free poster. I'll sign one of those posters for everybody. We love down. that. This is and, awesome. Uh, Frank, you just, you are the, you were the best when I read about what you were doing. I was a fan beforehand and having met you and talked to you, I'm so honored, so thrilled to see you guys coming to life and you came here for us, even you, Skin. <laughs> <laughs> so we thank Frank, but if you're in New York City, please be sure to stop by BookCon. See, it's called BookCon. So you want to go over, because it's all kind of books, comic books, book books, all kind of books. Make sure you go. And today, members of this audience are getting copies of his novels, The Looking Glass Lord and Love of Wonder. We will be right back. to Raven, we love them. We're going to make sure they hear a lot more. We want you all to come and look around and make sure that you love everything you see and have a great day and take a little time to enjoy your video.